So by the time you rewrote Banana Speeches mm. and Bases for the 25th anniversary, your feminist curiosity is clearly firmly in place. And as you um, said recently, you, you can't but see a gender analysis. Mm. What surprised you when you went and rewrote it? Well, I didn't rewrite it of my own free will. <laughs> but my wonderful editor at University of California Press, that's, I've, I've been very lucky and published with the same publisher with two or three exceptions since, since I started doing feminist work. And I have a feminist editor. This is no small thing. Naomi Schneider deserves a lot of credit. And Naomi and I were having lunch out at Berkeley and she said, oh, Cynthia, I hate to bring this up, but the people upstairs um, were wondering if you would be willing to write an update. Now, this is publishers. Publishers have to have new editions of book so it'll keep being adopted and selling, right? I know this, right? And this is their job. They're supposed to do this. And I said, I mean, Naomi and I are longtime friends. I said, oh, Naomi. I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. You know, I'm on to the next. Um, and she said, well, because I also knew she had this pressure, right? So she said, well, couldn't you just look at it when you get home and think about it? Now, what publishers mean by an update is they mean a new introduction and maybe, maybe, maybe a new epilogue and then they can package it as a new edition, right? With a new ISBN number, right? That's a new, you know, library number. Um, and then they can sell it. And this is what they do with a lot of textbooks, you know. Um, but I started rereading it. I hadn't re reread Bananas in, you know, ages, right? Um, and I thought, I don't write like that anymore. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in a minute. But I also thought, well, it can't, you just can't have a new introduction and a new epilogue. I mean, it's got to be the whole, the garment industry, the international politics of the gendering of the garment industry has to re, be repositioned in 2014. The international politics of the banana industry has to be repositioned in 2014. Military bases have really changed, and U.S. basing strategies have changed, um, and they have to be repositioned. So both, I thought, my sentences are different now. Literally, my sentences are different. Maybe if you read it and put it side by side, you would think it was the same old and low, but, but they feel different. I'm really determined on clarity these days, um, but also the material. It's not that I regretted the early one, but it can't just be a new little new introduction. You have to. So, of course, Naomi got me, didn't she? Because I thought, okay, okay, okay. So I had the UCAL press, which are wonderful press. I had them scan because I didn't even have the original bananas on a computer, um, if you can believe it. Um, so I had them scan the whole original bananas, and with the scanning, I started over. And I would say that the new bananas is about 80% new, sentence by sentence, with 20% being particularly some of the juiciest stuff. The history of Thomas Cook. The travel company, I mean, that's just juicy. You can't let that go. The history of Chiquita Banana as a logo for the Banana Corporation, that's too juicy. You can't let it go. But, but I repositioned it all. So it was, a really, it was really interesting because it made you so self-conscious about your own writing. You know? How do you write now? How, do you, how did you write then? What do you think of people who are reading your book? Where? Now and then. And I, now I, I'm in touch with, I'm very lucky, 
with feminists in a lot of different countries. So I think about Aisha in Istanbul reading anything of mine. I think, okay, you know, let's get up to speed here. You know, this has got to pass muster when Aisha reads it or when Insuk reads it in Seoul, which I didn't have in mind as much um, when I was writing the first one.